I am I am pay by Brad Meltzer illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos I am I am pay from the ordinary people change the world series by Brad Meltzer illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos I am I am pay I was born in China in the year of the fire snake. My parents named me Io Ming, Chinese, for to inscribe brightly, but everyone called me by my initials, I am. Kids born in snake years are said to be real problem solvers. My mom and dad had different perspectives, different ways they saw the world. She was a poet and a flautist who loved the arts. He worked in a bank. You should be a banker when you grow up, like me, like your grandfather. When I was little, my mother took me high up in the mountains. I wanted to explore and run around, but she had other plans, something called meditation. I want you to sit, close your eyes, listen. Listen to what? There's nothing to hear. Shh, be patient, just listen. Just before dawn, I heard a strange creaking, groaning sound. I thought it was bamboo shoots coming up from the earth. Mom, you hear that? It was a great gift my mother had given me, to hear the silence. It let me experience the world in a whole new way. As a child, one of my favorite places was an ancient garden owned by my relatives. The Lion Grove Garden in Sucho, which is pronounced Su Cho. To me, it was a giant maze, and I was a marble ricocheting off every corner. What a cool tree! The way it was designed, you couldn't see a clear path that went straight through. It forced you to explore and be surprised. Every few feet, something new would catch my eye. Whoa! Look! A stream! At the center of the maze were rocks shaped like lions. But beauty isn't made overnight. Hundreds of years ago, rock farmers chose certain rocks that they thought had potential. This looks like a good one. Then they chiseled and paint planted the rocks so water would smooth them over time. Do your thing, water. Decades later, the farmer's sons and grandsons would dig up the rocks to finish what was started. You picked good ones, grandfather. In China, many things were built over centuries. The past and present linked together. The gardens were designed for regular people, artists and poets, not kings and queens. When I was eight years old, my grandfather taught me about the great and ancient Chinese philosopher Confucius. He told me, wherever you go, go with all your heart. To give and to receive is a way of life. I also loved modern things, like playing billiards. I'd study all the angles, looking for the perfect shot. Ah, now I see it. When I was ten, my family moved to the city of Shanghai. I had never seen buildings so tall, ten, twenty, thirty stories high. Whoa. The Park Hotel was my favorite building. I imagined it grew from a hole in the ground, like a plant that now reached the sun. Look, uncle, I drew it. That's something. I knew what I wanted to be, a building designer. An architect. When I was 17, I made my way to the United States to study at some of the best schools in the country. Hmm, sometimes simple materials are best, like glass, steel, and concrete. This is your calling. William Emerson, MIT's Dean of Architecture.
I wasn't great at drawing. I was worried I'd be a bad architect. But I never gave up on learning. There needs to be a reason behind what you build. It can't just be nice to look at. Walter Gropus, chair of Harvard's Graduate School of Design. Notice how the sun keeps changing. It makes the space come alive. Marcel Brewer, Harvard faculty. Perhaps the most important thing I learned was this. Perspective. It means the way you see something. Your perspective can change depending on how you choose to look at an object. Sometimes it can happen when you spend time with someone who's different from you. This is Bill Zeckendorf, the first person to hire me as an architect. I was quiet and low-key. He was a bit louder. Call me Big Bill. Get your blueprints ready. We're going to make buildings that are bigger, that are better. He was born in the year of the snake, too. You can also, <clears throat> you can also change your perspective by changing your view. Zeckendorf had his own plane, so we could look at cities in a brand new way. Wow, I've never seen a city from so high. It taught me that a city is alive, bustling with activity. But the best way to change your perspective is to try out new ideas. Throughout my life, I'd wake up in the middle of the night, jot new designs on little sheets of paper, and leave them all over the house. Dear, it's 4 a.m. Don't you ever sleep? My wife, Eileen. I can try it this way, or I can do it that way. Not every idea will succeed. You need to try different things. After I started my own architecture firm, one of my first jobs was to build a science lab in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. To find good ideas, I slept outside the site, listening to the silence, just like my mom taught me. I didn't hear anything at first. It was hard. None of my ideas seemed good. Then, on a trip out to Mesa Verde National Park, I was inspired by the Pueblo Indian cliff dwellings. The trip showed me their perspective. Their homes. They're built into the rocks. What a beautiful idea! The goal was to make the lab look like it was carved from the mountain. To make the colors blend. We mixed local stones into the building's concrete. The front path zigzagged like the garden in Sucho, so you couldn't see it at all until you arrived. It won Laboratory of the Year. My real dream, though, was to build museums and concert halls. Soon enough, I got my opportunity. In 1964, I was selected to design the John F. Kennedy Presidential Library. It was one of the hardest projects of my life. The location moved three times, and critics hated my design. That's the building? Awful. Is that a glass triangle? It looks modern, not classic. Yuck. It's wonderful. Just give it a chance. Mixing old and new, concrete and glass, stone and light, we gave them a space that framed Boston. When it was finally built, people stopped complaining. Whoa. We put President Kennedy's words on the wall. All this will not be finished in the first 100 days, nor in our lifetime on this planet. But let us begin. Like rock farmers, we must all start somewhere. Not everything I designed was successful at first. In Boston, during construction of the new John Hancock Tower, the windows started falling out. Scratch! It was such a disaster. No one wanted to hire me. It nearly ended my career. Today, the Hancock Tower is one of the most recognizable buildings in the Boston skyline. Which e with each mistake, I learned something new. In time, I was asked to design one of the most famous museums in Washington, D.C., the East Building of the National Gallery of Art. 
but the shape of the empty lot was a problem. The space is a trapezoid, so a square building won't fit. National Gallery Director Paul Mellon For weeks, I tried coming up with ideas, lost in my thoughts. What's he doing? Shh, that's how he works. He's drawing new designs in the air. Even when you draw in the air, creativity isn't magic. It starts with hard work and perseverance. Finally, on an airplane, I doodled something on the back of an envelope. We split the trapezoid and create two triangles. A triangular building? Will anyone like it? In the first two months, the museum had more than a million visitors. People didn't want to leave, many of them waiting to touch the sharp angle at the corner of the building. They call it the knife's edge. To get It gets touched by so many people, the staff stop trying to clean the smudges. Yet when it came to museums, my most important work was about to begin. This is the Louvre, one of the most historic buildings in Paris, France, and one of the most famous museums in the world. It's been a museum since Napoleon's time, but hasn't been updated in hundreds of years. We'd like you to renovate it. Francois Mitterrand, President of France. The building needed so much work. Three million people visited every year, but there were only two public restrooms. Mom, I gotta go. There wasn't enough space to handle big crowds or store all the art. And most important, how do you get inside? No one knew where the entrance was. To come up with ideas, I walked the grounds for hours. I studied and studied and studied every angle and every perspective. We need a place where people will say, ah, that's the entrance. Where will you put it? Right here, straight down. We can dig and have it come up from underground. It took 13 years. When critics first saw the design, they hated it. Yuck, a pyramid? C'est terrible. They didn't want an American or some Chinese altering their heritage. But when they saw the finished product, their perspective quickly changed. This grand entrance! He mixed the old with the modern concrete with glass, bringing them together. Breathtaking! Look how it lets the light in! Today, the Louvre is more than just a famous landmark in France. It's the largest museum in the world, and one of the most visited. As for the pyramid, now everyone knows where to enter. It's no longer a palace for kings and queens. It's designed for all of us. Art and architecture for everyone. In my life, I saw both ancient art and modern design. Each one made me who I am. Each is beautiful in its own way. It's just a matter of perspective. Never stop looking at things from different points of view. Keep your eyes and ears open to the world and your mind open to new ideas. Let the light in. When you do, you'll have a blueprint for success. Pei's buildings are all over the world, from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland and the Meyerson Symphony Center in Dallas to the Museum of Islamic Art in Qatar. He won the Pritzker Architecture Prize, the profession's highest honor, and used the money to create a scholarship fund for students from China. He became an American citizen, and for his contributions to American life, he was awarded the Medal of Liberty at the Statue of Liberty Centennial. He valued it above all his profession's honors. To encourage young architects, he'd often say, you are the only one who can do this. Like the gardens of my youth, life is not a straight path. It curves and zigzags, filled with surprises that are meant to be explored and discovered. Wherever you go, go with all your heart. Your future is yours to construct, brick by brick. 
you can design it, shape it, and build something beautiful, build something meaningful, build something that expresses who you are. I am I am Pei, and I know that you are the architect of your own life. And then from left to right, we have other famous architects. We have Frank Lloyd Wright, Zaha Hadid, Bjarke Ingels, Antony Gaudi, and Maya Lin. Success is a collection of problems solved. I am Pei. And then, of course, at the bottom, we have our timeline. April 26, 1917. Born in Guangzhou, China. 1942, marries Eileen Liu. 1946, receives master's degree from Harvard Graduate School of Design. 1948, joins architectural firm Webb and Knapp. 1954, becomes a U.S. citizen. 1955, founds own architectural firm. 1961, designs Mesa Laboratory in, at NCAR. 1978, East Building of the National Gallery of Art opens. 1983, wins Pritzker Prize. 1986, wins Medal of Liberty. 1989, New Louvre Courtyard opens. 1990, Bank of China Tower in Hong Kong opens. 1995, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame opens. And May 16th, 2019, dies in Manhattan, New York at the age of 102. And then the pictures up at the top, we have going from left to right at the top, we have I.M. at 18 from his student visa paperwork. Top middle, Lion Rock in Sucho. And then the far right, we have John Hancock Tower in Boston. And then our photo at the bottom in the middle is I.M. at the 10th anniversary of the Louvre Pyramid.